to Rwanda because Rwandan citizens have welcomed the government decision to transform national documents to so equal representation 26 years after the genocide crisis. Some claim that initial documents were discriminatory and that they had brought division among citizens. But a new identification system has been introduced. According to the National Identification Agency, the modernization of national documents will continue. Let's have more details of that in this report. 26 years after the end of the genocide against Tutsis and Rwanda being liberated, people are grateful that their ID cards no longer have anything that promotes divisionism. The country's history shows how what was once social classes was transformed into tribal groups by colonialists and it was imposed into the ID system. It was a little book and that was the first thing to bring about the sort of tribalism that was seen in more modern times, that it was claimed a person was born into. However, we Rwandans used to have 20 tribes of our own, our Singa, our Zigawa, our Jesera, and so on. And any Rwandan could belong to any of them. The national idea as we know it was first introduced in 1933. But back then, and for many decades afterwards, it indicated a person's tribe. So it became an important extermination tool during the genocide against Tutsis, with the Nerahamwe militia using the cards to determine who would live or die. After the RPF in Otani stopped the genocide against Tutsis and liberated the country in 1994, national ID cards were no longer used in such destructive ways. <laughs> I was among the people that first participated in that project, heading the commission that was distributing the ID cards in 95-96. Arusha decided that ID cards that included what was considered tribes be replaced by others that did not, and even Habjarimana had tried to do it but failed, so he refrained from it. <laughs> Today, anyone 16 years and older is supposed to have an ID card with all necessary information to properly identify them. And officials at the National Identification Agency say the cards will continue to be upgraded, incorporating more and more technology. For the digitization journey, we've started, uh, we are, we've started a feasibility study for uh, the type of, which type of digital ID Rwanda will we be using. And we are, we are hoping to have it done uh, very soon, by end of October, uh, early November, where we will know which type. But it's not, it won't come to uproot the efforts that have been done. It will be actually a complementary uh, solution to the uh, identity and other infrastructures, because digital identity is not, it's, the ID is there, but it also looks at all the other components, including uh, PKI, including uh, infrastructure, including the readiness of all the players in the ecosystem. So today, our ID, we also provide uh, digital authentication. We are connected with more than 48 uh, institutions, both public and private, including banks, uh, including um, uh, Rwanda Revenue Authority, um, telcos, uh, and other government agencies, land center. Today, you can buy, when you buy a land, it's tied to your ID. Applying for services on Irembo, and uh, even for uh, social security, the Wudehe, and even Mitchell de Sante. So we have a lot of uh, institutions that are connected, and they provide the authentication to citizens. But we want to go beyond that and provide a fully digitized uh, identity in Rwanda. Close to 7.6 million Rwandans currently have national ID cards, more than 3.9 million of them females and 3.6 million males. In general, 96% of those old enough to have ID cards have them. <laughs>